Okay, fix and spray some surfacer primer on the spots that I fixed on the bottom. See where I put the new floor pan in. So I'm gonna spray a little bit of surfacer primer. PPG's NCP 271 gray corrosion resistant primer. Got the seams worked in on the quarter panels. All the filler work done, ready for primer. Uh, then I go over the whole body with like a DA, like some 80 grit to 180, and smooth up any of the like hitting from the um, the sand hitting it because it'll kind of give it a little texture. So smooth that up. Spray the surfacer primer to these specific areas, not the whole car. Mostly over the filler to smooth out the metal. Also worked a few places in the engine compartment, right here where the cut out for grease zerks for the control arms where they had repaired some rust on top of the valance panels and then it'll be ready to spray the red oxide primer on the whole bottom okay i'm going to be spraying another coating in this wheel tub and i've already sealed this with a red oxide epoxy primer yeah this is an undercoating it's a paintable undercoating yeah this ran a reverse tape just kind of keep the over the undercoat over spray off the steel Okay, let's get going. First with that undercoating. You can shake it by hand, but I'll stick it in my paint shaker for a little bit. It's a little quicker. You don't mix with anything, just put it in the No, you just, uh, it's a no clean up. So, it's a gun for it right here. This is a Schutz gun. And then that's the uh, straw. And the gun hooks in it when it's in the cam like that. Something to pop the top with. Pop it open and stick the straw in. That snaps in there. And the gun locks into place. And then you put the regulator on there. The air pressure determines how smooth it comes out. And I actually want it to spray thick and rough like factory. Factory originally used a uh, asphalt style undercoating. It's built real thick and heavy. There's really nothing modern if you can copy the original look because it was so thick and heavy. It was like an asphalt stuff. All this modern stuff is uh, rubberized. I'll put another coat on it that'll be actually uh, a light mist coat that'll make it give it a rougher texture. It's too smooth to look factory. Next, I'm gonna actually do it on the inside of the quarter panel, like factory. And I'll actually do a little masking because they had some straight lines in there where they kind of masked it off. They put it in the inside of the trunk for sound editing purposes. That way they put it sound like a tin can. On the inside of the quarter, when they actually sprayed it in there, it was droopy and runs and pretty sloppy, but it's really hard to duplicate that today's uh, products. Try to do the best I can with this. I've tried different applicators, and for the most part, they all are too smooth, so I just keep going back to this because it's the easiest product to use. Do a, a heavy coat, and then I'll go back after it dries a little bit and put a lighter, rougher coat on it. It's rougher than I would like the old asphalt. But it, it does a good job. It's a good product. So well, that's it, huh? Formal first coat. Inside the quarter, so it gives a good factory look. In the summertime, we'd be already spraying primer. Starting the second coat now. How do you make it rougher? Just spray it differently? I get back real far and just kind of mist it, turn the air pressure down, and it kind of splatters a little droplets so where it gives it a rough texture. Got all the undercoating done. We'll let that dry for just a few minutes and then I'll start spraying the epoxy primer on the outside of the car. I'm just wiping some of the speckles off that have splattered the quarter panel. It's got a nice texture to it. This is the factory seam sealer. 
they caked it on there and you can see the sloppiness of it it's still super pliable it's actually harder to get off when it's pliable like that because it's like rubber like this car been in a barn for 40 years so a lot of that's preserved yeah and it may roll downhill pretty fast so be careful when mm -hmm. cars have been out in the weather that stuff's so crunchy you just take a a scraper and scrape it right off or the blaster will blast it right off but this is still in such good shape it's like it's with day one and I'll, I'll go back over it with some fresh seam sealer that way if there has any pinholes or little cracks it'll reseal it even though you'll never see that it's behind the fender but it's still there say somebody a hundred years from now this is a historical piece and they take it off well that's how it was back in 1967. Yeah, originally they just stuck these on and it was bare metal between the two hinges so they got some protective between them now all this area has been ass washed it's a metal cleaner but it's an acid that etches the metal and cleans it i'm tacking off the steel so i wiped it all down and cleaned it all this will be re-sanded and primed and sand but just nice, I have a bunch of lint all in it. Alright, I'm fixing to spray the black epoxy primer on the outside of the car. This is a uh, industrial PPG epoxy primer. It mixes one to one. And it's your industrial stuff, so it has a lot of the good stuff in it that the normal automotive line doesn't have in it. So it sticks a lot better to bare metal. This is the catalyst to keep it from flash rusting. And you do all your plastic work like your body work all that on top of this epoxy primer because when the chemical reaction of a body filler starts to dry it gets hot and it can cause moisture to get trapped underneath the uh, body filler cause surface rust spray the whole outside of the car with this and it's in a black it's a sealer primer it's a non-sandable epoxy primer primer is usually a sandable and it's used to fill in imperfection this is just like a primer because you put it on first. Usually a good place to start is the roof panel and then work your way down. Spray it with a, usually a, a big tipped, like a primer gun, uh, about 30, 30 PSI, uh, sprayed about six inches away, overlap half of each uh, swath. It, it sprays pretty thin. It doesn't spray like a normal primer, so it's, it doesn't spray super thick. It sprays more like paint, so it, it lays out real smooth and nice. Um, I usually put two coats. That way the uh, metal is good and sealed and covered. Um, it has kind of a slight transparency on it, so sometimes you can see streaks and stuff, so that's a good idea to put two coats on it. It's a, it's a good anti-corrosive primer. I noticed you're very you're turning a nozzle on top. What is that? That's the fan adjustment. You can needle it down to pinpoint, or you can fan it out. Uh, you fan it out if you're doing like a large panel. You needle it down. If we're in a nook or cranny, you want to get paint up in to a tight area that the fan is just going to mist it, so you can get it good and covered. Did you run out of uh, primer? Yeah, it holds real close to a quart. Keep a distance about six inches. Overlap half of that, and then um, I'm actually I use both hands. So you probably know that I, I use left hand on a panel that's on this side, and I'll switch and use my right hand. So I can use either hand, and then if I'm up inside a body, I'll do the the needle down about probably three or four inches because you really wet it, and you can get one coat in, in when you're up in a tight area. And th there's actually a reason I use the black. The, the black, you can see more imperfections, like little dings or waves or, or so on. So I spray the outside of the body with the black. That way you can find any kind of dings or dents or anything that you need to address as far as putting filler on it or primer. When if you use a lighter color, it can hide any kind of damage that you need to find. So we can let that dry. About 45 minutes, and then we're going to go in there and start doing the red oxide on the bottom and do the inside, inside the trunk, and then um, when that dries, then we'll start spraying body color on the inside, basically painting the inside of the car, inside of the trunk, and let me overspray 
we're going to do the overspray effect on the bottom. We're going to do that today? Yeah. Being a new quarter panel, it's nice and straight. And then as you can see that. One little bitty real light hill dent right there. The only dent in it. Real tiny one. I'll rotate it and then we'll do a red oxide on the whole bottom. Red oxide primer, huh? Uh, this is actually an RM. It's the only one I found that is an epoxy. I have found some enamels and other primers, but it's hard to find the epoxy now. Everything's geared up for collision. This mixes four to one. The other was one to one. And this I'm gonna put a tad of a reducer in it, which actually helped it dry a little faster. Do you feel like a chemist? Sometimes. There's a lot to know on the chemistry of this stuff. Mixing ratios, troubleshooting. Go ahead and mix up another batch so we're ready to go. So the you said the paint gun holds how? It holds right at a quart, which you don't want to fill it up 100% because then it'll, it'll come out the vent hole. Four parts primer, one part hardener or catalyst. For actual primer is four parts and then the catalyst is one part and then I do it I like a dash like another one part of reducer which is a thinner red oxide primer is, is, is exactly the same stuff that sealer it's just in red See, the, the sealers they actually make them in different colors for different colors of paint because they're a sealer so when you spray a sealer on a surface, you want it, you're going to spray paint on top of it. So you want it to be pretty close to the same color as you're spraying the paint. So you use a red sealer, there's a, you spray a red paint on it. There's a DP90, which is black. So P, DP48, which is white. DP50 is red. And whatever reason Ford used red sealer on everything or red oxide, mainly as a, as a corrosion preventative but it's the it's the same process it's the same exact product i put two heavy coats on the bottom because that's basically the finished product of the bottom so you want it very well covered uh, fast and firm you can put on real thick like the factory did and it actually dries pretty quickly and then over that i'll go and use a uh, sprayable aerosol undercoating. Seam sealer that they used in the trunk area, like these uh, front seams, these front seams here. When a car is completely bare metal, there, there's some good quarter inch gaps that you have to fill. Like where you have two pieces of metal overlapping, with the seam sealer is pretty, pretty simplified the way it, it just fills in seams and stuff to keep moisture out keep rodents out, so on and so forth. I'm just smoothing it out, working it into the uh, nooks and crannies. Is that how the factory did it? They just spray it in real thick. Move it in with your finger gets a little better result. I've seen them where this little gully right through here was actually completely full of seam sealer. There's little openings in there where water could get through? Or? Water, dirt. It also makes it look better because you ain't got a gaping hole there where you can see daylight through it. They take this stuff in there, so if you're wanting to go concourse, then you kind of got to be sloppy with it. Like that's already one tube. Yeah, it takes about four tubes. I use a completely different seam sealer on the outside upon final paint. Three more tubes. You can apply this over bare metal. Well, it's probably best to apply it over a primer. But since I undercoat over it, it seals it off even better. So the media blasting took away all this old? Uh, yeah, that and I scraped a lot of it out so that you can clean the surfaces. So I take a scraper and scrape scrape it out as well as blasting it out. Okay. Now we'll do the inside. And they actually where they put these seat joints in. They seam sealed around all that because they MIG welded that in. Same way we're right here. There actually isn't any holes blown in it, but a lot of times there'll be holes blown where they welded that in. And that's why they seam sealed around those. 
So you really don't technically have to do that, but it gives it a factory. It gives you a nice factory look if you go back and put it back where it was at. Even though the seat and carpet will cover it all up. If you didn't use seam sealer, you'd have a lot more rust. You'd have a lot more corrosion. Um, you can prevent rust. But there's a hole where when they welded it, it blew. Fill in all them holes that they may have blew in or anything that might allow water or dirt or something to get into the car. And of course, like right here, you got this big gaping hole. A hole that big would allow a mouse to get in. So that's also, it keeps rodents out and bugs and dirt, debris. Yeah, that's how they did from the factory. New cars are the same way. They got some big holes that they fill in as well. Got another spot? Right there's always holes they blow in. They always build it up. This is in the uh, spring pocket. They seem sealed. Keeps the water from running into the engine compartment. Also protects against corrosion around these joints. A lot of this is to keep water and debris from splattering like you hit a, a puddle keeps it out of your engine compartment new cars are done exactly this way they have a different process of applying they have a pneumatic application gun it looks like almost like a welding bead as you can see this is on the outside of the engine bay this seam silver will be painted over with what in this area, black paint, and then of course in the inside of the car with actual body color. And like these big gaps here, you can see that was that big hole. And originally that was seam sealed and it had a big old droopy wad. So you can kind of replicate that and just really put a lot in there and let it kind of run into the engine compartment. That's how it was originally done. Another big hole? Yeah, you can see that big hole up in there. And there's a little seam sealer left in that. And you can see that has the original seam sealer through there and how sloppy it was done. Well, that's still functional. Don't have to be neat with it. It's supposed to be sloppy, concourse. If you wanted it to be neat and clean, then you're building street rods, show cars, doing concourses. You gotta think of it as this guy is Friday and he wants to go home. Seen him done this way on so many cars. Yeah, they're like, they'll put a bead and it won't even be close to the gap. But they never seam sealed this. There's some original seam sealer left. And you can see where they smeared it and then there's their little bead. Another remnant of the seam sealer the factory applied in 1967. And it's not even touching the seam. They just beat it and they didn't, that's how they left it. And that's from the factory. But y'all go back and I'll seam seal that later on when I'm gonna paint the outside of the car. I'm seam sealing it right now for the stuff I'm painting today. But most of it looks like it's good to go. Down the pinhole. You can see the light coming yeah. through the other side. Put a little more. And you can see like right here, these big chunks. And you can dig it off. It was sprayed in real thick. And so after you do the seam seal, you can go back with this undercoating. And you can see kind of where the line used to be. Same here on either side of the old seam sealer. And what I'll do is I'll spray it in right the way it used to be. And that is basically what it looked like originally. And also, if it gets scratched or something like that, or when you paint over it, it has that black underneath it. So it gives it that correct tint. You see through, you see the black kind of through the paint and the primer. It looks just like it did from day one. This is a rubberized undercoating in an aerosol. Same stuff that I sprayed in the wheel tubs, but this is an aerosol version of it. See little detailing tip that you actually will probably never see because the carpet all covers it up, but it's there. So this, what this does is it replicates what the factory did. It's finishing this off. Next, Jason sprayed the bottom of the car with the second coat of red oxide primer.
Obviously on a restoration, you're painting every square inch of the car and you're doing it as accurate as possible. Including the trunk, painting a car is like watching a transformation. They look so much different with new paint. And this isn't even the candy apple red top coat, which will go over this layer of red oxide primer. One coat will be it. That's all that's needed on the inside. Oops, ran out of that red oxide primer. And to do anything perfect takes time. Of course, it won't be exposed to the weather and the paint inside will be covered with carpet. Jason is spraying the floorboard, the inside of the roof panel, every square inch of the bare metal already prepped with seam sealer that is sprayed with the black rubberized undercoating. See that? The red just covered the seam sealer. Good shot. Well, two shots covered that factory seam sealer in the manner in which the factory did it. Reminds me of the Mark of Zorro, fastest paint gun in the West. One, two, three, four. Red sealer, red oxide primer over it. That way the paint, the red paint, would cover the black sealer a lot better and faster. Because if you spray the red paint over the black sealer, it takes like five, six coats to actually get that covered. And it would make the color a little darker. So if you spray the red oxide primer over those over that black and over those areas, then you're looking at two to three coats of getting to get it covered. I'll be spraying one good coat on the inside of the car, and then I'll be spraying the rocker panels, letting the overspray blow up underneath, and I'll be spraying the whole trunk area. And then after that is sprayed and dried, then I'll mask the engine compartment off and spray the engine compartment. The engine bay gets what? Engine bay gets a semi-gloss black. Like I'll go ahead and I will paint the dash. All the inside will be done. The engine compartment will be done. Inside the trunk will be done. The bottom will be done. So after that, it will come off the rotisserie. I'll put it on the lift, take the rotisserie off, and then start assembling the uh, suspension. Only after the suspension is installed and the car is on the ground on all four tires will the bodywork and the final application of the Candy Apple Red top coat be applied. Now this is the actual uh, body color, base coat. Uh, I'm gonna mix probably about a quart It'll probably take three to four coats around in the wheel wells. And then I'll be spraying the rocker panels, letting the overspray blow up underneath and everything. It'll probably take about a quart and a half. I'll be spraying one good coat on the inside of the car. On top of that red oxide primer. This color actually covers really well. Red's the most expensive paint you can buy. Pigments are very expensive. To do a whole car takes about a gallon. I got a little bit over a gallon. So a gallon of paint's over a thousand dollars? Oh, easy. In a good quality paint. Now you can buy cheap stuff. You pay for what you get when it comes to paint. You see cars with the clears all deteriorating and sun bleached out. That's cheap stuff. This paint here is a good 20 plus year. Like my cars, for instance, I've got one car that I painted in 99. It's over 20 something year old paint, so it looks good as day one. And it's the same paint, PPG paint. See the overspray transitions across the floor pan. Yeah, this will go back and spray that black and then you'll have black overspray on top of that a little ways. That'll have to be sprayed later. I actually have to be taped off this way and then just sprayed. I'll have to put another coat all in the wheel tubs in the trunk area. And then after that dries thoroughly, it'll have to be clear coated. But it's as shiny as it is right now. That's just basically what it's gonna look like with clear coat on it. And then after that is sprayed and dried, then I'll mask the engine compartment off and spray the engine compartment.